Mini PCs are everywhere, or at least they should be. Today, I've got my hands on two of them from MSI, the QB NUC AI Plus and the QB N, and you can use them for both work and fun. Now, this is very personal for me because I have a lot of computers around here and they all serve different purposes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of recreate some of what I already have going on here in my apartment to show you what's possible. We have two units to play with here and though they look very similar in design and they even conserve a lot of the same use cases, I like to play to a device's strengths. First, we have the QBN, which is a low power device meant for office use, productivity, web browsing, watching videos, and your basic day-to-day -day tasks. Now, when I say low power, I don't necessarily mean that it's only intended for light tasks such as those. What I really mean is that it's also low in power consumption and usage. So low that this PC is fanless and thus silent. We'll get back to that in a bit though. We also have the higher end QB NUC AI Plus. Now this offers much higher performance, more input and output, and can even be used for low to mid range gaming or lighter creativity software if you wanted to, which we'll explore later on. So I'll go through specs as we dive into each use case, but let's just get some basics out of the way first. The QBN we have here is based around Intel's N100 processor, which is a fantastic low power CPU ideal for, honestly, the vast majority of everyday tasks. That's where we are these days. It comes with Windows 11 pre-installed, so I just set that up upon the first boot up and went right to work. It's a similar story for the AI Plus, though that device uses the much more powerful Intel Core Ultra 7 258V CPU paired with their Arc 140V graphics that's of course integrated, but that's really what sets the two units apart here. And that is what gets you to the more powerful use cases on the AI Plus. Now, as small as they are, all of the QB series and most mini PCs in general still do offer a degree of modularity. And you know I love that. For the AI Plus, at least, the unit comes bare bones, which means you have to add storage in the form of an M.2 2280 drive. We've got one terabyte in here, which should be enough to test out the system and install some software, games, etc. So let's get started. We're working from home today, and that means answering emails, writing scripts, browsing the web, and synergizing. The QBN is more than enough for these tasks, so a simple out-of-the-box Windows setup does the trick here. The QBN is powerful enough to drive two 4K monitors, which is great for multitasking. I can't see myself living in a world without at least two these days, but I don't have spare monitors here to test with, and I'd rather not take these apart. It can do it over both HDMI 2.1 and DisplayPort 1.4, so multitasking is absolutely on the table. But once the workday ends, maybe you want to kick back and play some games, unless you're some kind of workaholic, of course. Let's see what the NUC AI Plus can do. As I said before, the Intel Arc 140V graphics here promise some pretty respectable performance for this form factor. And look, I'm not expecting to run the latest games on the highest, most extreme settings here, but I think it has its place as an entry-level gaming PC, especially if you tend to play older or less demanding titles. And besides, I have a dedicated couch gaming PC right over there, and there's this one right behind me. So as I've already shown, you can put these devices just about anywhere, so I don't need to really worry about how crowded my TV stand is, and neither do you. Let's just get gaming and see what happens using a mix of older and newer games. I'll get this out of the way though. 4K is just not realistically happening. It's, I'm not even gonna bother. So I'm limiting these tests to 1080p. I started out with Cyberpunk 2077, seeing how a very high-end title from a few years ago now can scale on this hardware. We're not here for in-depth numbers really, so don't expect that, but I'll make it quick. Cyberpunk is still a very demanding title and its benchmarking tool does make it easy to assess performance very quickly. Ideally, we want to hit 1080p at 60 FPS here, but I wasn't able to hit that at a steady frame rate, even with the lowest presets and Intel's XCSS Auto jumping between somewhere like 38 to 50 FPS. So I limited it down to 30 FPS and raised the preset to medium, this time with XCSS balanced, and managed to get a mostly steady 30 FPS, not quite locked, but mostly. This was my preferred middle ground, but alternatively reducing resolution to 900p, going down to low, but turning XCSS off, thus rendering natively, yielded a similar frame rate with a much cleaner image overall. In fact, I think it was a little closer to locked. The choice in the PC world is yours. Next, something new. 
I loaded up Claire Obscure for a few minutes, which is a 2025 title. And honestly, I didn't know what to expect here. This was a bit more challenging, and I was only able to achieve a playable 30 FPS experience using low settings at 900p and leaning on XCSS balanced. At 1080p with the same settings, the frame rate is less stable, hovering between 25 to 30 FPS. Now this is a PC, so mods are potentially on the table to be fair. It's far from ideal, but at least you have the option to play some of the latest games if you really want to. And it's still impressive that it's possible in this power envelope. The whole 258V system tops out at only 37 watts at max for those wondering, but looking at this performance, if you game at lower to medium settings, it's completely doable with realistic expectations. Lastly, I had to try something much older, just because some of us can't let go of our old games. Zone of the Enders, the second runner. The PC version is only a few years old now, but it's still ultimately based on a 2003 game, so I wanted to know if I could push this all the way. Unsurprisingly, the ARC 140V has the juice to run this game at 1080p at 60fps with all settings maxed out. I'd be pretty surprised if it couldn't. I was even able to get up to 1440p with the second highest settings locked to 60fps still. So if you love your older games, this GPU has you more than covered. Okay, back to the QBN. We have it right over here. We're back in my mudroom of all places, so pardon me for being a little cramped and hunched over here. I'm recording a voiceover, and it's a very, very DIY setup. Thankfully, recording voiceovers or vocal tracks doesn't really require a powerful computer these days, as long as you're keeping your project simple, which we got here. It's just one track. But what they do require is silence. The QBN's low power draw means it doesn't need a fan, and so it's completely silent. The QB has more than enough CPU power, USB connectivity, and wireless support to make this possible. You can have a separate PC, like another QB, as your home server, and save all your recordings remotely to be accessed anywhere in your home. And on that note, QB PCs are incredible for home servers. I'll try to be quick here, but honestly, you can use either of these units as servers, especially if all you're doing is simple file sharing and serving within the home. Servers can be anything from a mini PC like these, all the way up to towering rack mount setups that I will one day keep in a closet somewhere with lots and lots of storage. But personally, I like my home servers to be as low power as possible. They run 24-7 after all. Let's look at the most basic of setups first. You could simply leave the QB somewhere with an external hard drive attached to it as a form of network attached storage, then make that drive available on your home network. This could even just be the home office PC that we showed in our first example with the QBN. That, if you left it on, could simply serve a folder open to the entire home network at all times. And since the QBN is so low power anyway, just sharing those files around, that's fine. You can see the recording I made just before though shows up here. But what if we wanted to do a little bit more? One thing I'll mention ahead of time, because we will get to it later, is that both of these units have two Ethernet ports. So if you know, you know. More advanced users will probably love running something like Nextcloud, which can act as a self-hosted cloud storage replacement for files, documents, media, and a lot more, or perhaps a media server like MB and Jellyfin. Because the NUC AI Plus has a Thunderbolt 4 connection in the back and two USB 10 gig connections in the front, you do have multiple ways to connect fast external storage to that unit though. Before we wrap for the day, I felt we should dump all the footage I've shot so far. On set, you'll usually have a station dedicated to offloading footage periodically. Now, you could use a laptop, that's pretty common, or on a higher-end set, you might have a DIT with a workstation cart. It could still be a high-end laptop, but I propose something in the middle. Now, both the QBN and NUC AI Plus could actually be used here in the example I'm about to show you, but for faster storage systems that leverage Thunderbolt 4, you will want to go with the NUC AI Plus. If you want to process and preview the footage, I'd also recommend this one, as it has the additional power to chew through the footage. In this case, though, I'm using one of the 2.5 gig Ethernet ports to connect to a Blackmagic cloud store system. The second port could be used for internet access or just to have separate network access with the computer. Now, to be fair, the system would more likely be used on a local network itself rather than directly to the computer, but this still gives you the ability to separate your networks on the QB. Plus, 
it frees up your USB and Thunderbolt ports. In this case, I have a USB 3.2 Gen 2 card reader, and if we had a faster CF Express card in here to offload, we would be able to saturate the 2.5 gig Ethernet connection with ease. Look at that thing go. So there is a lot of ways to use QBs in your home. And honestly, a lot of the examples I've shown can run on either the lower power QBN or the higher power QB NUC AI Plus, depending on how exactly you push the systems. Gaming is really the only time where you have to have the AI Plus, but there are still some others. There's one more case though I've wanted to show you. Just to my left, you'll see a CRT TV, complete with a VCR and a Dreamcast sitting below. My little retro station here is devoted to playing old tapes, streaming old commercial playlists from YouTube, and yes, playing retro video games. I'll try to make this quick. I have the NUC AI Plus connected here, currently playing this very video. Yes, you're even hearing the TV audio. Purists would prefer I go directly analog here, but I have an HDMI to component converter connected from the QB to the TV, giving me a component feed of the computer monitor. I set up everything ahead of time because configuring software on this small low-res TV is, needless to say, difficult. All of this, though, was to play some retro games. And yes, I've even dug up some of my original discs. Thankfully, I still have a USB DVD drive to read them throw in a wireless controller, and I've got nostalgia pumping through my veins. Setups like these, in my opinion, really show the flexibility of the QB systems, because unless you need a ton of IO or built-in storage, like a lot of uh, magnetic hard drives, expansion cards, or workstation class hardware, there's very little you can't do in this tiny form factor these days. Really, it's a testament to how far these chipsets have come, both in terms of power efficiency and graphical capability. The state of modern personal computing is sometimes hard to believe, but it's easier than ever to get into. While these QB units have built-in memory, there are versions that allow you to add and expand your own. So in a way, you can get the joys of building your own computer with customizable RAM and storage while keeping the effort to a minimum. So that's it for MSI's QBN and QBNUC AI Plus systems. Let us know in the comments below how you could use them around your home, your set, your office, or really just about anywhere. I'm Doug with B&H, and I'll see you next time.